I grew up in a single parent household with four siblings, three sisters and one brother. My mom acted as both mother and father. My mom was strict with all of us, especially since our father was not part of our lives to offer the fatherly advice and guidance that every child needs. My mom was particularly harder on me because as she always stated, I was a splitting image of my father. She was upset and angry with my father because he chose to marry another woman instead of her and had another family that he cared for and not us. I would have constant conflicts and clashes with my mom and some of her beatings of me were obvious that they were targeted at my father. One of the things that she always told me that stuck with me was, I'm going to be just like my father. What she meant by that statement, that itching and indelible statement, was that I was going to be wild, have a lot of girlfriends, and get in trouble with girls' parents due to my supposedly involvement with many girls, or many females at the same time. For my tender teenage years, I vowed that I was not going to be, and not going to give my mom the satisfaction of proving her right, that I was going to be like my father, as relates to my involvement with women, or rather several women at the same time. I began to read books about psychology and human traits and behavior as a way of preparing myself for adulthood. Two other things that I vowed as a teenager are, one, never to beat nor mistreat my children, and two, never to be an absentee parent, knowing the significant impact that a father has on his children. Thanks be to God, I've kept my promises and I'm very proud of myself. I've never beaten or hit my child and I've been there for her throughout her life, providing what she, whatever she needs and also affording her opportunities that I never had as a child. I was particularly proud of myself and still am when my daughter was doing a rotation in Quebec on her journey to becoming a medical doctor. She was boarding with the family for four weeks during her rotation in Quebec, and they took her to various places of interest and entertainment. Their comment to her was, your parents raised you right. That made me very proud as a father, knowing that I did my job well. The turning point for me, whenever my daughter misbehaved, was being, uh, was being difficult or disobedient, I was always to remember my vow of no physical discipline. I used my voice and eyes effectively, and she knew exactly what I meant. I was always approached by girls, even from primary school, to get involved with relationships with them and do things reserved for only adults. The famous words of my mother, you're going to be just like your father, was my guiding light, as well as my vow to prove her wrong. Those kept me from jumping into relationships and to be monogamous when the time was right. I remember in primary school when one girl would always challenge me with the question, how can you say that you love God who you cannot see, but do not love me who you can see? It was always a source, a secret source of amusement for me when I had those experiences. Another episode I remember, and there are several, was when I was in high school and this first summer from another school, I was in fifth form at the time, kept throwing herself at me and because my response was not what she was expecting or wanted, she labeled me a homosexual, thinking that I would try to prove her wrong. Again, this was another secret source of amusement for me. One of the things I learned early in, the, in, in life was who I am, and I should not be too concerned nor bothered with what people said nor thought about me, as long as it's not going to cause any physical harm to myself or anybody else. You know, people had their various agendas, and sometimes it was not in my best interest. What I learned early in life was to please God and myself, and in so doing, I would automatically please others. I've lived the Optimist Creed for several decades, and it's infused in my heart and in my mind, and it comes out in what I say and do. So I've been guided by the Optimist Creed. Thank you.